What's up, everybody? It's your boy, The Lion, here with BW Sports 1, and we are here with another episode of Combat Zone, powered by Karma Coin. Check out the cryptocurrency that gives away to charities and gives you a chance to win supercars. KarmaCoin.co today. Elite Performance 765-499-1005 with a dream of elite fitness becomes a reality. Call Zach today and get started on your journey. Revved up tattoos, 317-537-2667. Book your next ink therapy session with our boy Todd over at Revved Up Tattoos. You won't be disappointed. Bomb Burgers, that's right. 7960 US 31 South in Indianapolis. Famous for steak burgers, but these, they are the bomb. Be Lit Organics, our girl Brittany Carino has got all the natural products, phenomenal feeling, soaps, bath salts, candles, you name it, she's got it. Be Lit Organics. Round one, fight. All right, welcome back to Combat Zone here at BW Sports One. And today we are getting embraced by the presence of a debut bare knuckle fighter that ripped his that ripped it for three rounds at BYB six. Gabriel. What's going on? Gabriel Fryer. What is happening, my man? How we doing? Oh, we're doing good, man. Just doing good. good. Back home good. and getting back in routine. Yeah, so, you know, we'll talk about your upcoming fight here September 11th, but let's kind of give the BW Sports One world a little background on your fight career, where you've been, and and, and the evolution into bare knuckle now. Oh, man, it's kind of a long story, man, because... That's great, I, we got time. <laughs> yeah, I, saw, I started martial arts when I was um, four or five, I started... Uh, I can't remember exactly which one because I started T-ball right after. One of them was – was they ran simultaneous. So it was four or five. I started karate, and then uh, I got my purple belt, and then uh, I played baseball and football my whole life too. Just always been athletic sports. I wrestled. Um, then I did taekwondo. I got to my purple in that. Um, I've done jiu-jitsu. I'm a blue in jiu-jitsu. And then uh, I, there was a, a judo tournament in El Paso, Texas. The, Hay- the Hayashi 2007 Judo Tournament. Um, and I just did that. I'm a white belt in Judo, and I won that um, at 173 pounds, I was. But, man, I've just been fighting. I'm, I was in the military. Um, what branch? Uh, Army. Uh, I was attached I was attached to 2nd 19 Special Forces Group out of Canova, West Virginia. Actually, here's our seal here. I was a signal. Uh, I can't even show it. But um, There you go. I was a, a signal. I set up comms, so... Um, our guys can talk to each other, but um, now jump out of planes and all that. But I played college football, college rugby, kind of rambling. Um, no, brother, I, this is part. This is this is the journey into bare yeah. knuckle, man. We all, we love hearing it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I I did MMA. I did a, a few boxing tournaments. Um, MMA. Just had my first bare knuckle fight. Uh, I mean, it, it's fun, man. Army combatives. I mean, I've just been fighting and been athletic my whole life and uh this is i like it. i like bare knuckle man it's, it's a real fight um and bo- a lot of boxers come in thinking that they're just gonna run it because you know, they can box but you can't you can't throw the same punches you can't sit there and just wail and throw five you're gonna break your hands you gotta there, there's certain places you have to punch plus a lot of people do this here it's where you hit the top of their head which is the hardest hardest part a lot of people break their hands on that you really gotta hit them in the jaw the nose like hit this area but um right. no man, it was real fun, dude. I, I liked it. I, I got real I got comfortable in there. And uh the trigon, it's not everybody's like, Oh man, it's so small. It's so this and no, there's room in there. There's room in there to move. You just you gotta find it, I guess, but it's there. 
Well, I mean, speaking of moving, I mean, you did a you did nice movement in that first fight with Villar. Now, speaking of your first fight in in bare knuckle with Villar, when you got the call, you know, and and you find out who you're fighting. Obviously, the guys had you know an extensive uh, career in, I believe, it was kickboxing or Muay Thai. Yeah, Muay Thai. Yeah, he had 25 Muay Thai fights. So when somebody's coming in, now obviously this was his bare knuckle debut as well. Uh, how did that sit in your mind as far as now? Granted, you're you're a fighter at heart. You you know you've been in battles left and right yeah, for a long yeah. time now. But putting uh, somebody up against you with that name in that background, how did you feel at first? Um, I wasn't too worried because I know my boxing is pretty good, and uh, in Muay Thai fighters they use like a like an eight points of contact or the fists, elbows, knees, and feet. He can only use his fists. And, right. you know, what I mean, and he's just using everything. So I was just going to see how good his hands were. And uh, I didn't think his hands were as good as mine. Well, that was obvious. And it made apparent <laughs> by round three. I mean, let's, yeah. you know, kind of going out, you're feeling him out a little bit um, in the first round. And let me just say, the jab that you have and then the, the footwork and movement that you had after throwing that jab or that quick one-two and got out of the way, yeah. I mean, that right there shows your athleticism. And uh, you were – you were doing it to a T and literally it was like watching a clinic in there that you were putting on, honestly. Yeah. And then, you know, we get to the third round, you knock, I believe it was two knockdowns. Yeah. Uh, the, the second one was kind of right at the end of the round. Yeah. Uh, he got up, went to his corner and did not continue on. No, so he didn't come back out. I thought he was going to come back out. I thought so too. And honestly, you know, watching it back again and again, you're seeing the ref pretty much, you know, say, are you going to continue? Are you going to continue? And then it was made known that no, he's not. And then how did that feel to you getting that debut win in bare knuckle? Oh man, it felt amazing. Uh, I put a lot into this man, especially into this fight right here. This was kind of like my, uh, my last shot. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I went in there and I performed, man. I, 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 I've, like, like you said, and everybody says, I'm an athlete. I'm used to, you know, game day, Saturday, training, and uh, people were talking about my composure and everything. Um, I don't know, man. I, I've been there. I've been in a, a lot of big stages, and, uh, like, being in front of a big crowd doesn't scare me, doesn't make me nervous. Um, honestly, I'm not even paying attention to the crowd. Um, I'm just paying attention to my opponent. And even Joe, I can't hear him. Like he's yelling at me. Man, that is hard as hell some, to say. You sometimes, can't hear him. yeah. Sometimes he'll come in and I'll hear something he says, but I'm focused on it, man. I'm I'm focused. I don't want to sit there and be like, "Oh, what'd you say?" You know. But I do hear him, and I know what he wants me to do. But I'm in there fighting, man. I don't hear him all the time though. Sometimes I just don't hear him at all. But I'm just so focused on my opponent that I'm just doing what I got to do to win. I know what I have to do to win, so I'm doing what I know. Right. And a lot of people don't understand that concept. When you are in a ring or a cage or a match like that, that focus, that tunnel vision, everything outside of that ring or cage goes out the window. And it's it's a tunnel vision right here. What's in front of you? Yeah, you'll hear stuff, but sometimes they don't register. Sometimes they don't click. Sometimes you don't hear it. Sometimes you do. It's it's difficult. Right. Now, how did uh, how did you feel coming into BYB? I mean, obviously, you know, there's. There's there's other organizations out there now. BYB, Mike, and Mel seem like they got their shit together and they're going on the right path and direction. I you know I have nothing but bad love and respect for them guys down there. How did it feel to get that call to go into bare knuckle? Not necessarily against any opponent, just getting the call to go bare knuckle. How did that feel to you? I was happy, man. I wanted to fight bare knuckle. Um, I thought that is a good place for me. You know what I mean? With my athleticism, with my boxing ability, with my movement, uh, my power. Uh, I just thought it was a really good fit for me. I have a pretty, I have a good chin. You know what I mean? So uh, I just, I thought, I thought it was a really good fit. Like it's a good place for me. You know what I mean? And um, a lot of MMA fighters, they, they all hate, like that are still doing big things. They always, they all say you go to bare knuckle to die. You know what I mean? To retire and this and that. But no, nah, man, it's a different fight, man. You, I like you've seen boxers coming there, MMA fighters coming there, and they get starched. You know, it, it's more of a fight, man. It's a street fight. It's unpredictable. Um, you don't have those big old boxing gloves to to block everything. You know, right? Um, it's a it's a it's a higher pace. 
like boxing, boxing, you, you usually fight in six, eight, ten rounds. You got to keep – there's a certain pace you got to keep in your cardio. Nobody nobody goes balls to the wall. But then – unless they're going to finish somebody. But you have one of those same boxers going to a bare knuckle cage, and that bare knuckle fighter is going to go balls to the wall that first round, and he'll catch that boxer because he's not – he needs his space, he needs his time, he needs to find – his distance, his range, you know, and that bare knuckle guy is going there, going crazy. Now that that's a good part, the they going crazy part and the boxing ability, but you gotta you gotta find out how to mesh it, how to mesh it, and to find out what what punches work, um, and what combinations work, you got, and what movement works. It's it's like a new game there, and it's you have to that you have to find out and master. Now speaking on that, actually, uh, that was be my next question. From making the transition over from boxing and MMA and, and all the other martial arts that you did and competed in to bare knuckle, like you mentioned, you know, you have different angles. You have different shots that you need to take uh, different from like boxing because you do have those, you know, pillows around your face. Yeah. How was that transition for you in your training? And then once you stepped into that trigon, as far as, you know, the, the space that you were talking about, the, the, the different techniques in defense? Uh, you need to rely on accuracy. Man. Accuracy, like I said, in hard shots, because you can uh, – Pauly, Pauly said that um, you can't go in there like boxing and throw punches your hardest, like during my fight because you'll break your hands up. No, I was throwing every single punch hard. Like real hard, but I wasn't throwing. I wasn't throwing hard old four punch combos when it's hard to land your your last punch or your third punch or maybe your, where you're just hitting everywhere. Either you might hit them here and then fuck and then hit them in the top of the head. You know you got to be you got to be real precise, man, and hit them where you want to hit them. If not, you're gonna hurt yourself. I mean, you could have dense bones and stuff, but I mean, why? I don't know. It, it's it's like it's like another game, man. You have to. It's a different style of fighting. It's. I mean, yeah, you can brawl in there, but just just put a, a brawler in there against somebody who knows how to fight, who knows how to pick his punches and this and that. He'll make that brawler miss all day and pick him apart. So it's just – there's a different game in there, man. Different – and styles make fights too in there. So, Did you see that kind of from your opponent in Villar when you were fighting him uh, with his Muay Thai background as, and coming into bare knuckle? You know, did, could you see that little – uh maybe hesitation on his end as far as because he started off pretty wild you know yeah he was, he, he was trying to have everything yeah he was trying to crack me it's because uh the weigh-ins he's a little bitch at the weigh-ins man i mean i wasn't gonna shake his hand i mean we're there to fight man we can talk and be friends afterwards whatever um but i'm not gonna sit there and and, and shake your hand give you a hug i'm not gonna go out there and, and hit your, your glove every round like i'm there for a purpose man i'm there to fight you I'm there to win. Now we can talk afterwards, but when it's that fight, man, you gotta it, it gets real serious. So it elaborate on serious. elaborate on that. What happened at the weigh-ins for us? Oh, uh, I got up there and I weighed in, and um, well, he explained himself to me uh, during the the real weigh-ins in the morning when we got our, our actual weight because that was right. just ceremonial weigh-ins at weigh-in. Um, right. I was walking out. And then, like, I guess I kind of, like, bumped into him or, like, he, like, he shook my hand. I'm, like, he's, like, good luck. I'm, like, oh, okay. Like, caught me off guard. I wasn't going to do that. You know what I mean? So then right. he said at the way, and he went to shake my hand because he thought I was a respectful guy. That's what he said, like, after the fight. And I was, like, man, I am, but I had to do it, dude. We're, we're fighting. Like, um, you know what I mean? Now, I'm in saying that, um, it's, it's we're fighting, dude. Like, I, I, come, I come for business, man, and I come to fight. It's I'm not coming there to be friends with anybody or, or go get a drink with you afterwards. Come there to knock your hat, your teeth down your throat. You know what I mean? That's, that's and then I'm like you said, it. afterwards we can have that drink or whatever. But until yeah. then, business is business. Yeah, I don't want to plan it. I don't want to think about no good times. So what I'm thinking about is putting you and bouncing your head off the canvas, man. Putting you to sleep. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about my shots when I'm going to sleep. I'm thinking about what shots are going to work, what what movements are going to work, what I'm going to hit you with, how you're how I think you're going to react, and how I'm going to react. When you get in there, you push your fight. You fight your fight. You don't – if you're waiting on anybody, first of all, if you're waiting on people, you're losing. The judges are going to give it to them. Right. And um, if you're waiting on people, you can get caught. I mean, they, that's when they can set you up. When you're waiting on somebody, that's when they find their openings. Right. So you go in there and you fight your fight. You do what you want to do. And, and the whole time, you just be yourself and do you, and you'll have a good fight. But it's people that go in there, they can be timid or 
like, no, I'm just going to counter this guy. I'm going to, he's too powerful. I'm going to move. Man, just go there. Just go there and fight, man. You just have to fight. Let your natural instincts take over, too. You can't control everything. Your natural ability comes out. So That's wholeheartedly yeah. true. And and obviously, again, you showed where that was coming from. You showed yeah. your game plan from start to finish, and you handled business. You took him out in three rounds, and yeah. then it then it was party time. Then you could yeah. then you could enjoy yourself. Yeah, it was a so, crazy venue. It was nice, super nice. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. So I mean, what is this one of the I guess best venues uh, that you have fought in? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. It's uh, I love that place. It was really nice. I mean, it just it was expensive now. Oh man, it, <laughs> uh, it was like Vegas in Miami, but um, right? it, it was a nice place, man. It was real nice. It was beautiful. I mean, it was well put together. I mean, it was nice. Well, now we move September 11th yeah. on the 20th anniversary of you know the the whole yeah. uh, Twin Towers for, get yeah. debacle. This is for you know yourself. Thank you for your service, and thank all your brothers and sisters for their service. How does this? matchup being on that date in miami now we're moving venues to down into miami now how does this feel for you yourself fighting on the 20th anniversary of the september 11th deal when i first heard the date it was going to be september 10th right right and i was like oh that makes sense you're not going to do it on september 11th then they switched to, to september 11th and i was like oh okay usually nobody really does nothing on this day um yeah, it's it's just another day, man. Like I said, like college, like like sports. It, uh, September 11th is my game day, and now I have till now until then to get ready. And then I'm gonna perform on on Saturday on the 11th. So it's like it. it's it's uh, and I'm doing it for my family, man. My son and you know my wife. Like I'm I'm. How old is your son? Doing it for myself. He's five. Okay. Yeah. Is he so an I'm up just, and comer in the future? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, he likes to wrestle around and fight. And so I'm putting him in wrestling, um, this school year. So nice. So is it yeah. first grader? Uh, no, no, he, he, uh, is, he just turned five. Gotcha. And so he missed the date. So he's actually, yep. uh, he's being held back, which is fine though. Cause, right. Uh, I missed the date too. And, um, actually, no, I, I barely made it. I graduated at 17 and I was okay. kind of, I wish I had another year, man, to grow up a little bit more. You know what I mean? He's right. gonna be eighteen when he graduates, so I'll be, I'll be. cool. I I graduated about two weeks after I turned eighteen years old, so I, <laughs> and I was one of the younger ones in the class. Yeah. So I get what you're saying. Yeah. Now, yeah. so what is the difference? Obviously, two different people. You know, you went from Bilar to now uh, Zachary Kelly. What yeah. are your? Obviously, you don't give me all the tricks and, and, and trades in your camp going on. But you know, what is the difference between your first your first fight in bare knuckle to this second matchup with with Kelly? Um, different in camp, in training, in your thought process going into this fight. Um. Well, first and foremost, I'm gonna, I'm looking to finish in spectacular fashion. You know what I mean? That's what I want to do. Um, you want that bonus? Yeah, well, yeah, I want the bonus, I want the win, and then I want the fans, man. Fans like spectacular fights. They like knockouts. They like good shit. They don't like somebody who's going to play it safe. Um, right. But uh, what's the difference? This guy I'm fighting now is a little more well-versed with his hands and his movement. And um, he's uh, he's uh, he's had like 28 boxing fights. Um, he's had like 20-some MMA fights. I don't know how many MMA fights, but he's a veteran, man. So. Mm -hmm. He's been hit before. He knows how to recover. You know what I mean? Because some people don't get that. Some people, like, they'll get hit real hard. And um, that little daze or something like that, like, that they don't know how to recover from that. And they'll get finished. You know, a lot of people are like that. They're not used to hit, taking them hard old shots and then just saying, oh, no, I'm good. Let's go. Let's go. They're used to taking, like, oh, shit. What the? Right. So you have to learn. You have to learn how to, how to snap out of that. Because, I mean, I've been caught before. Everybody's been caught before. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, it's part of the game. Yeah, you're gonna get hit, so it's just gonna happen. So, but um, uh, this guy here, man, he's just he's awkward. It looks like he has long arms like me, so we're probably gonna have similar reaches. He's an inch taller than me. Um, I'm I'm five eight. The <laughs> tail of said five five, but uh, and he's five <laughs> nine. Yeah, had me like a little midget, and said Delaro was five seven, and I was and I was like barely taller than him. But no, I'm right. five eight, and um, this guy's five nine. He might 
have some I don't know. He he has boxing ability, but um I believe I'll finish him. I I don't know if he's gonna be able to because he got dropped by that dude. And uh and the guy he fought used to fight. I mean, he used to, he was a pretty good boxer. He fought on I think he fought on De La Hoya's card before I the guy he so. fought. And uh, but he fought at 35, man. And he was he's fighting now at 60. Yeah. So that guy was fighting a small, a smaller opponent, and he got dropped by him. And actually, the smaller he was winning, but he got caught with that left hook and like broke his nose or something like that. And then the guy I'm fighting won. But um, we'll just see how he can take my power, man. It's gonna be the same. I'm gonna pepper his face up. Well, I mean, everybody I fight, I hit him with my jab. I hit him with my right. I hit him, I hit him, I hit everybody. So I'm he's gonna feel it and we're gonna see how he how he likes that how he tastes the power and um i'm just gonna i'm gonna bloody his face up man and see how long he can stay in there and i'm gonna keep keep my um my game plan just do what i gotta do to win you know what i mean i like what you said and i'm gonna elaborate on this a little bit for me when you are in there whether it be a, a ring a cage boxing mma whatever type of match when you're in there the minute you can tell that you either hurt your opponent or you've gotten your opponent kind of off their game, what is that telling you? How do you, how do you um, analyze that, that quick, you know, the analyzation during a fight is key in your mind. How do you analyze that? And when can you tell, okay, it's go time. All right. Now this is tough for fighters in the ring or in a cage or anywhere. You don't always know when you hurt them. You don't right. see all their body language then doing a stanky leg in the back because you're looking at the face. You don't always get to see that. So sometimes you'll miss it. You know what I mean? But if I see it, I start pushing the pace. I start pushing the pace. Now, I'm not just going to go blow my load and try to kill him. No, I'm going right. to push my face. I'm going to start hitting him more. I'm going to be getting his face more. I'm going to make him wear down. And I'm going to knock him out. But um, it, it's like a chess match, man. And some – some guys too, you can hit them real hard, and they'll fucking and they'll and they'll stagger, but they're they can hit before they're good, right. they're ready to go. So you go in there and try to finish them, you're gonna get hit like Greg Hardy got hit by Taito Ivasa, and you're gonna yep. get knocked out when he thought he was all done. No, he did catch him, but Taito Ivasa, man, he didn't hit before. He knows right. how to he knows how to recover himself. Like I said, some people can't do that. They right. they get hit, and they, and some people can't they can't regather their legs. They can't you know their head. And it's it's it's. It's different when you're in that cage or in the ring. So as long as you've been in uh, combat sports, what is it that you look at uh, your opponent to kind of analyze the the situation, the status of your opponent? Is it his eyes? Is it his? What do you his, mean? Like okay, wow. so you notice when when you when somebody's getting tired, you know their mouth starts to open, their jaws wide open, you know yeah. their, their their arms kind of dangle down a little bit deeper in their stance what is it that you uh really pinpoint in as far as your opponent when they're fighting gabriel what are you looking at in there uh i'm sure a little bit of everything but you yeah know. it's it's more than just one thing um but a, a sure tell is their, is their eyes when they're, when you hit them and their eyes kind of roll or they move or they get real big you know, yes, you, you touch and you can see it in their eyes and um and their breathing, they're like cardio, they're the way they're handling themselves, the way they're moving, how slow they're moving around. So you can always tell uh, when you're wearing somebody down. And then like Nick, he started breathing heavy. Mm -hmm. Um at the end of the second, which I probably should have jumped on him a little quicker at the end of the second, because he was trying to he was like just running. And um but the third man, I heard him breathing like every time I hit him, he was like <sighs> Like he was like taking deep breaths. So all right. In that third round, I pulled, I turned up the pace a little bit. I started yep. throwing a little more strike and hit him a little more. And then at the end of it, he couldn't take him over. Hey, I will give him credit, man. That's a tough guy. He could take a shot, and I'll yep. give him credit for that. That guy can take a shot because I've hit people with the same stuff and put their lights out, and he he was still there. So credit to him for that for sure. Yeah. Well, now I'm gonna bring back a little bit of right after the fight. So, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So, you get the victory. We're sitting there, you know, pretty close. And then Brandon Lambert stands up, 
and you guys start going back and forth and and kind of kind of give us the BW Sports One fans what happened after that fight and then what happened and didn't and isn't going to happen that was supposed to. He's a bitch, man. He's he's a keyboard warrior, man. He's an internet gangster. He's your best friend when you're in person. Hey, man, hey. Hey, just hey, no matter what happened tonight, man, just just your son's gonna be so proud of you, like bringing my son in it, kind of like making me like, oh, okay, he's not trying to. But no, dude, he talks so much shit, the most shit in the world, bro. He he's an embarrassment to fighters, an embarrassment. Like I, he conned the KFC into giving him a fight, um, saying he was forty three, four one and two or something, saying he, man, I don't like him at all. He even came out one time. Oh, that's one obvious. Po- yeah, one <laughs> podcast. One podcast. I, I don't know how you lie about something like this. He said that he had a brain tumor on one podcast, and and that he had to teach himself how to read, walk, and fight again. I'm like, what? And he was like, and the guy asked him, asked him when it was. Well, when did this happen? He's like, oh, uh, he was thinking about it. it took him like 30 seconds answer, like 2014 or or 15 or. I'm like, what the fuck? You don't forget nothing like that. You know what I mean? I joined the Army February 28, 2013. That's the day I signed. And that's me joining the Army, not me having a brain tumor, having to remember how to walk again and read and talk and fight. So I just don't like him. He's a liar. He lies about everything. He can't fight at all. He's scary. He's so – right now, he right now he's just basking and just, just trying to get all the fame. And I don't know what he's trying to do, man. But he just signed another contract with BKFC. That's what got him out of my fight. Um, we were supposed to fight. Everything was done. Contracts were being made. We shook hands. We talked to the matchmaker. It was done. I was going to beat his ass. And he knows that. And everybody he he's friends with knows that. His gym was there with him, Slaughterhouse. They know that. I'll fuck him up. And they know that. So he ended up finding some type of excuse. Can't even remember what it is. And uh, he pulled out. And then, like, the next day, he, like, signed a new three-fight deal with, uh, with um, BKFC. But – in all honesty, I have no idea why they'd give him a three fight deal. Maybe because he has he's like a TikToker. He has like people like that. He'd probably get beat up by one of the TikTokers. I but, could be wrong, but I think and it, don't quote me on this, Gabriel, but I think they gave him a toe the line contract, not an actual uh, Oh, a toe, oh toe the line. Okay. I think okay. again, don't quote me on that. I'm not trying to throw uh bullshit out here, but that's what I think was the contract was for. Well, that would make sense. That would make sense for him to get that and not the BKFC. Um, I mean, I want to see him fight again. I just want to beat him up, man, because he disrespects everybody. He disrespects everyone, man. He he talks out his ass. Another thing that he does is if you talk shit back to him, he'll report you. And he gets he gets all kinds of people like Facebook jail and so he'll talk shit to him and then they get pissed off say something back he'll report to him and they get fucking facebook banned and is that why joe just, was in jail dude <laughs> i've been in jail i've been in jail like t- two or three months over this guy joe's been in jail i think two two times it's just i just don't like but i'm gonna let it go obviously because i mean he ain't shit but i just uh, i wish he wouldn't have pussy out of our fight i want to knock him out and close his mouth because like i said he's a he's an embarrassment he's a disgrace to the sport he's not a fighter and he's he's trying to act tough and trying to act like a fighter. Like he took a picture with Josh Burns and uh, what's his Dylan Checkler? Is that his name? Kleckler. Kleckler. He took a fight. He, he took a a picture with him and said, uh, "Brawley, get out of the kitchen." Out. He said, "Um." He said, "Taking a pic with like we're killers and everybody's scared to fight us or something like that. Like just some something stupid. Like I don't ain't nobody scared of his ass, dude. He he takes pictures with uh." with fighters and then tries to act like he's tough like them or something. I don't know. I just don't like it. Pulled out of the well, fight. And now it's a total line and uh, it's what it is. My next opponent is uh, Zach. So yep. that's, what, that's who I'm focused on. That's exactly who I'm focused on. Well, brother, I can't wait. I think we are anticipating a trip back down to Miami uh, yeah. that week to yeah. come down there and watch you guys live again. It was fun. That was our first experience uh, live at a bare knuckle event. Yeah, I loved sweet. it. Mike loved it. I mean, yeah. 
this is this is where our heart is, you know, in combat yeah. sports, and and it seems like you know eventually this will be the top tier sport of combat sports. What do you think on that? And as far as the evolution of combat sports in general, kind of moving to its roots again. Um, I like it. You know, it's it's a it's a pure it's a pure gritty combat sport you know what i mean it's always going to be action it's always going to be oohs and ahs i mean in the ufc and big time bellator and uh one and all these big mma um uh promotions there's a lot of uh hugging and shit going around just wrestling and grappling there's not really no crazy fights and knockouts which there is every once in a while but like when you watch a bare knuckle fight man everybody's getting brutalized the whole time so Mm -hmm. people will want to watch it as entertainment more for more it, it'll be more entertaining but they i think they still got a little bit to go though because ufc oh, yeah. and, M- and mma man they're just so far up there they got everybody watching everybody knows who they are everybody so it's going to take a little bit to catch it but i think people will eventually be more entertained by a bare knuckle fight than an mma fight so if gabriel fryer was to set up a match with anybody outside of the bare knuckle realm outside Outside of bare knuckle, if you were to set up a match, who would be the two people that you would pin up against each other in bare knuckle? Okay, uh, not me, two people. Um, yeah, if you were setting it up, who would you bring in to fight each other? Who would you like to see fight in bare knuckle? Oh, shit. we throw the hard questions here. <laughs> yeah, because there's a lot of fights, man. Right. Um, the one person I got real excited when I heard that he might be going to bare knuckle was Mark Hunt. Mm-hmm. And I'm, a, I love to see him fight somebody, dude. He hits, he's just a tank, and he has a chin. He has a chin. Yeah. So, um, man, it's it's just hard to. That's a tough one, dude. Because there's a lot of of fights that I would like to see, and then um. I, I don't know if I can answer that, to be honest, because there's just so many. Uh, name a couple. Who? Uh, just name some guys or girls. Yeah, hell, even. Because the girls division, man, I'm not going to – taking nothing away from you and the guys, but, man, watching, you know, uh, Knuckles and uh, – was it Patricia? Yeah, yeah that was a great yeah. fight, man. Man. I, I love that fight. That was an amazing fight. Um. <sighs> Okay, well, I'd like to see Connor in bare knuckle. He'll have no more excuses. Um, I'd like to see him in bare knuckle. Uh, basically, the big time power punches and strikers, I'd like to see in bare knuckle. That doesn't have that good of a ground game. Um, like Brock Lesnar. Yeah, no, don't bring him down. <laughs> he'll he'll fold after one shot, dude. He don't oh, like yeah. to get hit, and he's no. just so big, dude. It's huge. You wouldn't think so, but now he hates getting hit. Um, which nobody likes getting hit, I guess, but. He right. he'll he curls up into a ball and he's a fucking gorilla. Um right. just I like to see uh man, it's it's well in the bare knuckle fuck I, I can't answer it, man. There's just I don't I know. Who, them. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't know like a huge fight to because there's so many of them that could okay, uh I'll just throw one. I'd like to see. I don't know if Nate will ever do it, but if Nate ever wants to do bare knuckle, he would be he would be good. And um, shit, shit. Nate and Connor bare knuckle would probably be cool. It'd be a strike. I like strike that. fest. Nate and Connor. And uh, Nate's boxing is just incredible. Connor hits yeah. hard, so uh, Nate will get super cut up. I wonder if he might. They might call the fight because he just has so much scar tissue if he fought yeah. bare knuckle. That would be but, the problem with the Diaz brothers because of yeah. their, their extensive scar tissue around that just opens up every time. And it, and obviously in bare knuckle, it's going to open up like that. Yeah, Connor, he's he says that uh, he counts like knockouts as losses or something like that, not submissions. And, well, he's in the wrong sport, you know what I mean? So right. put, him in, put him in bare knuckle or something. You know, let him fight one of them because that's what he wants to do. He wants to punch you. You know, he doesn't want to grab on stuff and then – He'll talk shit to you if you if you take him down. Like, well, it's mixed martial arts, man. That's just what it is. <laughs> right, but he'll be the one to try to take you down first, as we saw in the last match, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that's because he got he got stung, man. <laughs> right. It, it it was second nature. Yep. All yeah. right, 
It is time now for Rapid Knockout. It's a segment that I do with everybody. It's five questions that has absolutely nothing to do with the fight world, and you can elaborate on an answer if you'd like, and I'm oh, and, and I would enjoy it to you. Are you ready? All right. All right. Question number one. Favorite food? Uh, grilled chicken. Grilled chicken. All right. It, with any seasonings? What's your seasoning preference? My taste buds are gone, dude. Uh, when I was in the army, <laughs> we they told us to uh, swallow your food now, taste it later. So I eat everything uh, super fast. I eat everything. Uh, my taste. Uh, so I, you're the two minute eater. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, and uh, and I eat a lot, a lot of grilled chicken for my diet, and I actually like it, man. It's real good. So, yeah. right, and, and then before a fight, I love, I love me some pasta, some like uh, for carbs and stuff, like. Uh, the red sauce or the white sauce? Red sauce. All right. All right. So if we're down there, we might have to go to dinner after weigh-ins. Hey, that's sweet, man. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. All right. Question number two. Favorite music, whether that be a genre, a group, an artist, what's on Gabriel's playlist? Um, R&B and hip-hop. You know, New school, old school? I love my old school R&B, man. Um, Marcus Houston. I mean, like. Okay. Joe, uh, well. I was a bunch of them, man. Um, so you like and... the baby making music? <laughs> yeah, I can listen to that, <laughs> and I can chill out, man. I'm from right. Tampa. We we liked. It's different, I guess now. It's more more. But uh, when I grew up, man, like that '90s music, early 2000s R&B, like that was hmm. that was what you listened to. Oh yeah. But I can listen. I like rap. I like hip hop. I can listen to a bunch of stuff. Tupac but, yeah, or I like Biggie? Tupac. All right. <laughs> God love you. Third question. Other than combat sports, so training, fighting, and all that, is there a sport that you would enjoy participating in or do you enjoy watch? Football. That was my first dream, man. Football. Gotcha. Yeah. So who's your team? The Bucks. I'm from Tampa. Born you. in Tampa. <laughs> At the St. Joseph's Women's Hospital. There you go. There you go. Who's your college team? Uh, the Gators. Okay. All yeah. right. See, I'm in Indy, so I uh, live just south from uh, just south from uh, uh, God's country in Notre Dame. So I've born and raised a Notre Dame fan. Yeah. Now, yeah. on the pro side, oh, bring her on. Is, she, is it son? Your son, right? Yeah, it's an interview. Can come on. He you want to come, come say hi? Yeah, bring him on. We gotta see that. We gotta come see here. the up and coming. Come here. Hello. Hey, what's up, little buddy? Uh, say hi. What's up, little man? How you doing? Good. Huh? Are Good. You ready for school? Yeah. Yeah. Is is mm -hmm. daddy teaching you all those moves? No. No, not yet. No. All right. Well, I'm sure when you get mm -hmm. a little bit older, daddy's gonna start teaching you those moves, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You have a good day, buddy. Okay, bye. What do you want? Some, do you want some snacks or something? What do you want? Oh, my. I'm He wants to think, learn that jab. That's what uh, he's saying. Yeah. I think it's upstairs. No, it's not. All right, I'll go look for it. I only brought the phone. I only gave the phone to you and I forgot to bring it in. Okay, I'll look for it in a minute, okay? It's yeah. outside and come to the uh, note. I'll go get it. All right. I love you, son. See right yeah. here, brother. I'll let you know. Yeah. We are very family yeah. oriented, so there is yeah. no problem when any kids, wives, or anything like that want to come on the show. Oh, of course. Thank you. But I do gotta tell you, my pro my pro my protein, spit it out, is a Philly fan. I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan, born and raised in Indianapolis. My cousin, my brother, my sister-in-law, my son, Cowboys fans. Oh, what shit. kind of rivalry do I have yeah. going on? <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, Question crazy. number four. Besides combat sports, boxing, training, and all that, what do you like to do for a hobby? Oh, uh, I like games, video games. What like kind of you? Fun. What are you? What kind of gamer are you? Uh, shooter. Okay. So are you more? Are you more Call of Duty? Are you more Rainbow Six? Are you more uh more Call Fortnite? of Duty? Like Call of, I, I Call of Duty. I played Apex, um, okay. Legends. I played Fortnite before. Everybody's played that. Um, yeah. 
like that style of game. What's it called again? Uh, uh, like first person shooter. No, no, no. Like where you dropped on an island and you have to be the last one to win. It's called something. Uh, I know what you're talking about. But I can't think of the name. Yeah, but so you like those, those type? Well, those games are fun. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I, I play Destiny too. Like I. Okay. I just play a. I play just shooters, man. I play sports games too, like 2K, basketball, Madden, football. Gotcha, gotcha. And I'm sure you play with the Bucks, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like playing with them when they were the worst team in the game. Now. Now everybody's like, oh, you can't pick the Bucks, you're cheating. Well, that's my team, man. <laughs> yeah, born and raised in Tampa, man. if you've been in there, fan, you're yeah. not fair weather. <laughs> All right. Fifth and final question, brother. All right. Whether it be on the personal side or the sports and entertainment realm or both, biggest role model growing up? Uh, this is funny. I was told this later. I I'll say one just because it's funny. When I was really, really young, uh, I looked up the um, Ace Ventura man. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jim, good. Jim Carrey, bro, I love him. I would watch oh, that every. Then. I would watch that every day, man. It was hilarious. Uh, What's your favorite scene out of the first movie? See, I'm making you think here. Joe told me you had a plethora of knowledge in that brain. He told me yeah. you're a very smart individual. So I'm throwing the tough questions today. That's all right, man. <laughs> uh, when he found out that uh, Inkle, or I uh, can't remember her name. Was Einhorn, it? Or <laughs> Einhorn yeah. is Finkel. I'm, yeah, yeah. Finkel is Einhorn. Dude. He fucking grossed out. Started, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd be, I'd be kind of grossed out too. Yeah, that was funny, man. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while, but that that part was funny, man. Just he's funny, like he's yeah. he's funny throughout that whole movie. Just his character. That's what I like. I like this character. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. I don't think anybody would have ever thought. Oh, I was super young. That's when I was super that, young. <laughs> I know, I know, but I don't think anybody would have ever thought that Gabriel Fryer would come out and say Ace Ventura to that. Yeah. Question. That is good shit right there, my brother. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate the time. Now I give you the time to shout out your sponsors, your family, your friends, your supporters, anybody that you would like to give a shout out to. The floor is now yours, my man. Um, okay, most importantly, God first in Jesus' name. He'll help you, man. You just gotta have faith. Um uh, my son, Elijah, my wife, Cassandra, uh, my boxing coach, Terrence Kelly, boxing gym, TKO Boxing Club. Um, I got some sponsors, uh, A1 Testing, um, there's uh, Turp House Farms. Well, we're, we're working something out with them. We're seeing what's going on with them. Um, let's see, Suncoast Breeze, AC, and uh, uh, HVAC in um, Tampa. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, uh, Medicine for the Masses. It's uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's a... Uh, it's a cannabis um, company. My gotcha. friend uh, Kevin runs that. Okay. Um, and that's that's about it right now. Yeah. Cool. Well, Gabriel Fryer, everybody, watch him September 11th, BYB seven, down in Miami. I'm hoping to be down there. I'm 99% sure I'm going to be down there, and I can't wait to see you again, brother. Thank you again for your time. And as always, you can catch all the hap hap happenings over at bwsports1.com. And for Combat Zone, we're out. Peace. Okay. See you.